Edinburgh with Philippa Woodsford and Maxine K. Brown. We welcome you to our weekly podcast. Each week we will bring you a different topic and we would love it if you could subscribe and leave any comments. We will come back to all the comments as quickly as possible for you. Also, you can join our social media and all the details are in the information section of this podcast. We hope you enjoy it and we look forward to all your feedback. Thank you. That's it. So welcome to the Enchantment Tower. So how have your week been, Philippa? You froze. <laughs> that's a good start. That's it. You froze then. I thought that's a good start. <laughs> This is just us, isn't it? But how hard we try. Oh, <laughs> just close that. Up. Brilliant. So, what do you want to go through? What we're going to discuss today, because it, it's uh, one that you came up with, wasn't it, this week? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, first of all, for anybody who's not seen us before or doesn't know Maxine or myself personally, uh, my name's Philippa Woodsford. I am a, a medium, a holistic therapist, a spiritual healer, um, and I also work with um, holistic therapy, hypnotherapy, psychotherapy, that kind of thing as well. Um, and I am an author of a book called Curse Daggers. Um, and I'll let Maxine introduce herself in just a second. <clears throat> Excuse me, we decided today we were going to talk about self worth mainly because a lot of the clients I've had lately um, have also come to with different levels of lack of self-worth or not aware that they don't have um, much self-worth. So Maxine and I, um, we often have these little chats sort of in between and, and we thought because of the work that we do and the clients that we've both seen recently, it would be a really good one to, to, to start with this morning. So yeah, I'll let definitely. you introduce yourself, Maxine. And Yep. Um, well, I'm Maxine Brown and I am a life coach and a hypnotherapist and uh, I've also written a couple of books, um, 31 Days Life Changing Journal, which is basically my story and then at the end of it, it explains how to use a journal, how it's helped me and then I've also done a year journal, which has got a full affirmations and areas for your positivity and end of each month, it's got a breakdown so you can go back on what happened last month and what's happening, what you're looking forward to this month, which was quite good because this morning I've been doing that for January, which uh, was a bit of an eye opener. I can imagine yours is three or four pages long this month. <laughs> I could have gone off this morning. I thought, it's going to go well. And I went, ooh, where would you like me to oh, start? Yeah. <laughs> Did you start at six o'clock and carry on? <laughs> but it's out of my head. <laughs> that's oh, the main thing. Bless you. Yeah, definitely. And that's the big thing, isn't it? It's getting it out of your head getting it yeah. into perspective by putting it down on paper Absolutely. that's it Massive. definitely i will apologize to anybody watching in advance i'm yawning my head off this morning it's not because i'm tired i had a day off work yesterday it's because maxine's stressed and she needs healing <laughs> and when people need healing i naturally start to yawn as the healing flows so i do apologize <laughs> oh dear it's very true it's a lot going on <laughs> yeah bless you busy mom so hopefully this is streaming on um, certainly my groups and um, and my page. Um, I'm trying to get it on my YouTube channel at the minute. I'm not 100% sure whether it's streaming today. It didn't last week. It didn't bother last week. Just thought, no, we'll not, we'll not bother. Um, but you should be on Maxine's um, page as well. Yeah, yeah, that's lovely. So where do you want to start, Maxine? And obviously anybody watching, please feel free. We can see when you put your comments on there. Please do feel free to join in the conversation and put your comments on. Let me see if I can get my Facebook page up as well so I can see if any come through on there. Yeah. Um, but, you know, we would love your interaction. We'd love to hear your stories or kind of hear things that resonate with you, anything that we talk about, if that resonates with you. We'd love to have your input on that. I think that's something that we're sort of both really keen on on promoting with this, isn't it? You know, is audience participation. Yeah, just bear, sorry, I'm just, that's it just trying to get the chat up so it, we should if anybody sends any message it should come up onto our side so we can see it fingers crossed if it works <laughs> it may not <laughs> yeah, yeah. we'll see what happens <laughs> i'll put that on there as well lovely okay so do you want to start then maxine with sort of you know your ideas of what self-worth is and um you know and, and a, a little bit about yourself as well you know you've just built up a brand new business like you say you've just had your, your two books published and things you know how was your self-worth before you started this and how has that changed by taking a little bit more control of your life and you know sort of pushing yourself out there 
Yeah, um, it was terrible, to be honest with you. Um, I thought I didn't think it was as bad as it was, but when I look back, when I, especially when you sent the, the message through about what we're going to discuss this week, I realised how bad it was. Um, and yeah. I used to, I didn't, I used to, everything was about everybody else, and I was like on the back burner a lot of the time. Mm -hmm. And I must admit, over the last probably year and a half, two years, probably even probably a few more than that, I've realised that I need to make sure I'm okay as well. Because yeah. if you're not, you can't carry on and you can't do, and especially I can't do the job I'm doing now because I need to be able to make sure I'm fine to be able to then help others. Um, yeah. And so sometimes I, I'm not selfish, but it comes, it can come across as being selfish because I will say no to something that I don't want to do or I, and I don't feel it's right for me to do anymore. Yeah. Um, and I have no qualms in doing that any longer. Where before mm -hmm. I used to feel really guilty if I ever said no to anybody. Um, but you've got to sometimes take a step back and just think of yourself and then everything will open up, I feel now. And I've yeah. realised that. And so, yeah, that's it's it has changed me an awful lot. And I have I, I take time out when I need to take time out. Um, I'll go for a walk when I need to. And I won't let anybody walk all over me, which I had done in the past. Um, and that's why I got out of the relationship I was in <sighs> many years ago. Cool. So, uh, yeah. What about yourself? Yeah. How would you, yeah. you know, what, definitely. What do you I think, yeah, I think you've hit the nail on the head there. I am a people pleaser, 100%. Never realised it until a few years ago. And even when I did realise it, it took a long time to sink in. Do you know what I mean? And you find yourself, you're in a situation, somebody may be really horrible to you, and then they ask you if you can help them out, and you go, yeah, of course I will. And then you kick yourself afterwards, and you go, <laughs> and it's not about, being mean to people, it, it is like you say, it's about allowing yourself to go, actually, if I do that, I'm going to be compromising myself, either my principles or my time or my energy or, you know, um, there's lots and lots of different things. I mean, I've always been the sort of person up until very recently, you know, I looked after my in-laws and, you know, I've always been at home raising the children and trying to work my job around them, yeah. even to the point where I put everybody else's needs before mine. And then I viewed, like, my job, and I guess everybody else did, as kind of like the extra thing where actually I was bringing money in, I was building my career, and I put me on the back burner a lot of the times. Now, luckily, I have an amazing husband who, unfortunately, if I don't say something to him, he'll just kind of truck along. But if I say, <laughs> help, he'll go, okay. <laughs> and he's there, and he's actually very good sometimes at point now where you'll say Philip you need to say no or Philip actually you've been walked all over there don't don't take that and he yeah. will often see it before I do um, and I think I've I've more recently I mean I remember when I turned 40 you know I felt like I was going to Gallows Maxine I don't know about you <laughs> 30 didn't bother me at all. I was the other way around. I was 30, really, oh. really upset me. 40 and going <laughs> and 50 and I'm not bothered. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, no, I don't bother anymore. It doesn't bother me. Nah. 30 really upset me. Yeah, 40th. I was there. Devastated. That's it. My youth's over. My life's over. I'm middle-aged. And do you know what? Actually, my 40s have been the best years of my life <laughs> because I've developed myself worth and yeah. uh, I'm not... I'm not as worried about putting everybody else's needs before mine. I'm quite capable of going, I need a little bit of time out or actually that doesn't suit me now. I'm not quite so bothered about saying that to people, you know, and I've had a couple of people lately and they're trying to sort of get me to do, um, you know, platforms or, or, or parties or whatever. And I'm trying to squash it in. And normally I'd go, right, I'll move everything around. I'll exhaust myself. I'll do that. Yeah. And now I've gone that's not an appropriate week for me. It's not that I'm turning down work, but if you'd like me to do it, we're going to have to find a different time to do that. And it feels really good, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, it is. It's, it is I do that with my diary. I have, I have a set times when I will work and the rest of the time is my time to do what I enjoy doing and spend time with my husband and do, you know, do different things. And previously I would have dropped everything and said, yeah, of course, I'll fit you in. But yeah. no, you have to, I feel that now it's my time and I have to be really strict with myself. And if somebody really, really struggles, then yes, of course I will do. So, uh, yeah, we've we'll got hi, Jack. To... <laughs> somebody <laughs> messages. It, <works. laughs> it messages. Thank you, Jack. Hi, Jack. Yeah, and kind of sort of Jack joining there was coming at a point when I was going to mention, you know, relationships. And this doesn't have to be 
marriages or, or long-term relationships like yeah. that. It can be relationships with your parents or relationships with the children or your family. And, you know, we, we've both had different scenarios of, of relationship problems where you accept other people's behaviour or you accept other people's treatment of you. And, <clears throat> excuse me, there's, there's like an old proverb, isn't it, where, you know, just because you can't see my self-worth doesn't mean I don't have any. And yes. that actually really resonates with me because sometimes people will treat you in a certain way because they don't see your self-worth. So that's that circle of sometimes you don't see your own, so they don't see it because it's not being pointed out. And other times they don't see it, so you don't feel you've got any. Yeah, and you, you don't, know, you just carry on plodding along and doing what everybody's expected of you. Yeah. And you don't, you don't look at yourself and think, hmm, this isn't quite right for me. Yeah, absolutely. But you've absolutely. got to stand the ground and you've got, yeah. you've got to make the changes. Um, yeah. You really do. And you've got nothing to lose and don't ever, and nobody should ever feel guilty about doing that or um, make it looking after themselves. Because at the end of the day, if you don't look after yourself, you can't, as I said before, you can't help others, but you also will be so sad that you won't want to carry on and you'll, you won't live your best life. And it's, you've only yeah. got one. And so yeah. that's why you really do need to take a step back and look at things and write it down. I think that's a really good way of getting everything to see where you, you know where what makes you happy, what doesn't make you happy, and you've got to make you know, look at those things and um, make a list of them. I think that helps an awful lot of people when they're not too sure about things. Yeah, massively. I think I've just been working with a client recently, actually, who um, was in kind of a whole life changing situation, you know, and there was a whole relationship, job, moving. That there were so many different things. And he seemed so overwhelmed. And that was one of the things that we discussed. Write it all down. Write what's working for you. Write what's not working for you. Yeah. Write where your plan is to be in five years' time. And then look at what you're doing now and how that's going to take you towards that plan. Or is it going to hold you back from yeah, that plan? That's it. And, you know, I mean, you're, you're better than me. I used to write a diary. God, I used to write a diary for years and years. And then I got out of the habit and I find it really hard to get back into but actually you are right you point out a lot of things to yourself don't you when you, you write do. things down. definitely yeah you can work you can work things out yourself and I think what you can do you can prioritize and you can write down you know what's the most important what and then you can you can see what you need to be doing every day especially what makes you happy every day and then the things that you don't like you can put those in in between just because you're gonna everybody has to do things that they're not very keen on but just yeah. make sure that the your side that you enjoy doing is much much bigger than the side of the jobs that you don't and the people that you need to see and not giving yourself enough time and things like that so make sure every single day that you do give yourself some of the time yeah absolutely sorry I think I've got a couple of messages that are coming through on on this side but I can see them sort of flashing on my screen but I can't yeah. see the actual message that's coming up but that that's not come up on there either it's just sort of ping but not come so if anybody is messaging the message on the Facebook page Try and message via the stream because then Maxine and I can can see it. And um, obviously, Jack, you know, we're quite happy for you to, if if you want to talk, if you wanted to sort of give any of your experiences, please do join in. You know, it's it would be lovely to to hear. But I think a lot of, you know, um, self-worth problems can kind of date back to our childhood. Sometimes it can date back to our parents or sometimes grandparents or experiences at school, isn't it? And it's that fear yes. of... If I'm not a people pleaser, if I don't do what they want me to do, then I'm going to be abandoned or I'm going to be neglected. I'm going to be left. They're not yeah. going to love me, you know. And and that's a sad one because so many of us suffer with that for various different reasons. You know, if you don't do what somebody else is asking you to do, then you're displeasing them. And, you know, as children, sort of from a psychological point of view, children were very on well, as we both know, of child's abuse, they will still love that parent more than anything. They will protect that parent because it's a survival instinct, isn't it? That parent's the only one yes. they know. That's the only protection they have. Yeah. So in which case, you know, if they can please that parent and make them happy so they're not cross with them anymore, then they're gaining that approval and they know that they're safe and they're loved. Yeah. And they don't realise that actually the fault is with the parent and not with them. And unfortunately, right. it's something we don't grow out of. You know, you think as you grow to an adult, you would grow out of that because you're not so dependent on that love and approval and, and you haven't got that survival with them because you're able to look after yourself. But actually, from a psychological point of view, we don't grow out of that, do we? No, you know? and it's, I think it's the same as being when, if, when you were bullied, if you were bullied at school as well. 
yeah. that is amazing how that can live with you all the way through so that you'll end up going into your teens and your 20s and 30s and I mean if you don't look at it it will carry on with you for the rest of your life and so you will always be the person that says the yes person really because you're yeah. frightened of what could happen yeah. um and it's if you can especially with parents if they can see a child being bullied get it like stopped and get them to speak about it straight away because otherwise yeah. it will definitely go throughout the life um with them you need to Absolutely. like put a stop on it straight away because it, it yeah it does really does can affect um as you're growing up that's things um in my other job at work you know we we sign on um and because we're all working from home we have yeah. a teams where we keep in touch with each other via teams with team leaders and things like that which actually works better being in an office because in an office you have to get from your desk and go and speak to people or call people over where on teams everybody can continue what they're doing but i've noticed sometimes you sign on and nobody responds to you now that's fine it's not actually a problem you don't need people to respond other times you sign on you'll get five or, or six hearts where everybody's sort of giving a heart as if to say hello yeah. i've not you know personally on those days when there's no hearts coming automatically you start that shift a little bit yeah a little bit more. nobody's happy that i'm here okay and it's not the case because doing the job that i do we work with medical stuff we work with hospitals everybody's so busy and they're probably gone all right okay she's yeah great that leaves my shift but the fact that they haven't put the heart on you kind of feel a bit low and if you get loads of hearts you're like oh everybody's really busy that's lovely. <laughs> and it, it's ridiculous but you know this is where sometimes facebook comes in you know people have, and i've noticed people put a picture of their tea and everybody loves it somebody puts up i'm feeling really low today i'm not feeling great or i could really do with a friend or i'm a bit lonely and people ignore it and it's not because they don't want to know they don't know how to respond they, have, or they, yeah. just, they sort of go right okay they prefer the happy stuff and then that person who's reached out then feels absolutely distraught that they've reached out and nobody's responded yes but the people who haven't responded haven't looked at it like that so it's not that no. they're being mean and that brings your self-worth down as well doesn't it it does and yeah. i think also i mean social media can do so much harm with self-worth as well because you see all these happy family pictures or going out part you know couples going out and having meals and things like that yeah. and I think sometimes when you're feeling really low and things aren't going quite as well as you want them to go when you start seeing all these types of pictures it can affect you yeah. and people need to realize that's probably just one hour of their day you don't you know look at the other 23 hours they might be feeling exactly the same as you are um, but they just want to make a big thing of that one hour or one thing that's happened. And so yeah. don't always believe and you know what's happening around you because it can be very false. Yeah, absolutely. You know, you see a picture, you think somebody's got an amazing life and you haven't. And actually, that's just a snapshot, isn't it? That's a split second yes. of somebody's life. And we can all put a smile on for two seconds, yes. can't we? We can all put yeah. a bit of a show on. It doesn't mean, like you say, that that's kind of it forever, is it? No, that's you know, it. Or that they're any better than you are, or somebody's house might be nicer than yours, but it doesn't mean they're happy, you know? No, but I think, I mean, when you were saying about the, the job you do now, how they send hearts and things like that, I remember working for somebody, um, and it was, they used to have a screen, because we all worked in the big office, um, but yeah. during the week, it used to pop up onto your screen to ask how you were feeling. And if you were, if you were feeling, you know, you had to, it was on a, like a, a range sort of thing from, I think it was one to 10. And if you yeah. were anything below, I think it was about six or seven, then one of the managers used to come up and have a chat with you and take oh, you to, and have a coffee yeah. and everything. And yeah. that was quite nice because they used to be able to keep an eye on it, all the team, but not be in your face. And you, and you had to answer That's this because it kept nice. popping. Because to begin with, sometimes I used to be working, I think, oh, go wait, you know, carry on and everything. And it yeah. kept popping up. So you had to be, you know, answer it. And That's so it was okay. nice. To, yeah. It's just with it, when you've got other people checking in, and I think that's yeah, good yeah. if you know if you've got somebody that's a bit low and things like that, and not or not very good at explaining how they're feeling. If you yeah. can just do a check in every now and again, you don't have to be in their face or anything like that. It's just if somebody knows that you you're out there caring, it makes a huge difference. It makes them. a massive difference, doesn't it? Yeah. It does. And I think you know one of the things that we have to learn is if if you're not lucky enough to have that. So Jack's just put on here, the I'm social media thinking. aspect of life now doesn't count. Can with support group? Yeah, that's that's absolutely right. 
um you know yeah. it, it can you can find support groups and stuff i've completely forgotten what i was about to say <laughs> what was that what was that point about but that that's kind of along those sorts of lines isn't it where you can access support groups now you can do it more anonymously you don't physically have to go and have a look now jack's right on on facebook or you know some of the social media channels you can reach out almost anonymously can't you well, you can and, and, yes. and do that definitely um which which is lovely but what was the point i was going to make before i can't remember where i'm starting i did have a valid point <laughs> <laughs> it was when i was saying about asking for help and we were talking about um just to send a message to people if for them not to feel yeah and i was going to say if if you don't have that support either in a work environment or a friend environment or anything like that one of my big things with my clients is learn to support yourself you know yes. there's, there's a saying isn't there about the bird never worries about whether the branch underneath her will snap or not because she knows she can always rely on her own wings yeah and i think that's something i'm, I'm always pushing my clients with and I, and I do push them and i'm like you don't need their approval all right, you know, you might find that you're trying to fight for your parents' approval all the time. You've probably got it, but they don't tell you that you've got it, so you don't feel like you've got it. But actually, in their heads, they'll be like, well, she should know that, or he should know that. Yeah. And, you know, it's the same, like, if you have a bad experience with a relationship or with a friend or a bad experience at work, like you were saying, bullying, that sort of thing. It's actually all right, and it's actually healthy to be your own best friend. You yes. know, we spend so much time looking in the mirror and you look in the mirror and you go, oh, God, I look fat today. Oh, look at the bags under my eyes. God, I look horrendous. How often do we get up and go, you look bloody marvellous this morning. You're cooking on gas. You know, you look yeah. great in those new jeans. You don't do it. And yet you yeah. wouldn't walk up to a best friend or get up and look at your partner in the morning and go, but you look fat today. <laughs> you, you just don't. Yeah. And if you do, there's something not right. Yeah, you're not quite right. <laughs> yeah absolutely you know and you know and jack's saying that it's a generation thing as well about people wanting to open up Definitely. we are of a generation now where we will talk a little bit more we are a bit more aware we are more accepting where i know my parents and, and my grandparents everything was done behind closed doors oh you don't tell people that you're struggling you don't no. tell people that you're feeling low you don't show anybody you know you put your lipstick on and you go out, you puff your chest out, and you go out, and you pretend that everything's absolutely fine, no matter how you feel. Yeah. And it's not healthy, is it? No, no, it's not, because it. that's when it starts bottling up inside you and everything, and it makes you poorly. Uh, physically, you will become physically ill, and that's why you say you take... you take time out when you need to you go and go off for a walk if you need to go and have some time alone going off and meditate I mean and things like that but just be really good with yourself and look at yourself and again what we've just said what's not making you happy and what is making you happy and if it's not making you happy you really need to look and stop doing it because yeah. Otherwise, you'll carry on pushing on that and doing that and you'll just get un more and more unhappy and then you won't love yourself and you've got to love yourself first before you can then go to and have a proper relationship, relationship either at work or within you know, your home life and things like that. And that's the thing to think of. Yeah. I think a lot of people say, you know, two halves make a, a relationship. And I'm always, no, you need to be two fools. You need to be you two full people. And that's yeah. not to say that nobody will love you if you don't love yourself. But it is harder to have a well-balanced, harmonised relationship if one of you is always sort of looking for that little bit more, I don't know whether attention is the right word, but security, I think, would probably be the word. You know, if, yeah. if one of you is always insecure or has a few broken pieces sometimes meeting the right person can help fix that but actually you don't need to have somebody in your life to fix yourself you, you've no, got definitely to, learn to rely on your own wings don't you you know yeah. and, um, and and fix yourself but that doesn't mean not reaching out not talking to people not sort of looking for help it just means understanding acknowledging and realizing there's a problem and then yeah. working on it which is actually really empowering as we both know in different yeah. things that we've been through taking a little bit of control of your own life and your own thoughts and no matter how horrendous a situation is that you've been through being able to take a little bit of control for yourself is so empowering isn't it yeah you know, oh massive. definitely and you, you feel so much happier and you yeah. can do so much more then because then you can carry on and enjoy your life because you've 
you've conquered that. And I think if then anything else comes along, you think, oh, that's all right. I can go and deal with that. And then absolutely, yes. and I can makes, get through that. <laughs> exactly. It makes everything seem so much easier to sort out within your life. And you'll think of things, think, oh, that's nothing. I can do that. I've done whatever you've gone through, you've sorted out and you've got it straight. And yes, yes you'll have blips. But you, the thing is, when you do have a blip, it's remembering what did I do before to sort myself out and make, you know, love myself again and feel really good again. And you just go back and repeat that. And yes. each time it'll just get smaller and smaller where and then you can cope with anything that anybody throws at you eventually. And I think as well, learning, you know, as we said before, just because somebody else doesn't see your self-worth or doesn't appreciate your self-worth doesn't mean that you don't have it. Exactly. I think sometimes as, as, as humans, we all seem to, and I find this with people who have um, sort of repeated relationship patterns, whether it be with parents or partners or friends or, or work colleagues, where they're repeating the same patterns all the time. They're always the underdog and that kind yeah. of thing. And it, it's because you have to you have to acknowledge that you have to break that cycle. And we very often we we'll attract ourselves to people that don't see our self worth because we think if we can turn them and make them love us or make them like us or be accepted by them, then that makes my self worth even better. Where yes. I've sort of reached an age where I go if you don't see my self-worth, then I'm actually not going to waste my time on you. I don't need to turn your opinion of me. What I need yep. to do is surround myself, choose my tribe, and surround with myself with people who love me for who I am and who accept yes. me for who I am, warts and all. And if those people aren't around at this particular moment, then I'm quite happy to do that for myself. And that's, I think, the hardest thing to do. I think we are innately programmed to want that approval from other people. Yeah, you want to be in the gang, really, don't you? You yeah. don't, and you don't want to be the one that's on the outside looking in. You want to be involved in it. But yeah. if those people aren't accepting you for you, then don't be in that gang. Go and find yeah. the gang because there will be a gang there somewhere for There's you. Your own gang, yeah, exactly. Absolutely. And you get you pull the people in that are going to help you. Don't ever take the just because you want to be part of it and then not enjoy it, and you feel awful then because yeah. you will walk away and go and think well, what have I got out of today or you know got out of that meeting because you'll be trying to fit in all the time absolutely and, make, and you're becoming somebody else not yourself yeah, yeah. and it and that's and when you've got to think of yourself you know be you know, you're worth an awful lot more than that and that's the thing yeah. think of what yeah. you're worth of and do that and sometimes we sort of go I'd rather run with the bold and the beautiful than be in the quirky gang but actually, personally, I'd rather be myself and be in the quirky gang. Yeah, definitely. Than be with the bold and the beautiful. Do you know what I mean? It, it is finding your place, isn't it? And, and yeah. I, I think I'm a massive advocate for being authentic, a massive advocate for accepting yourself for who you are, loving yourself for who you are, whatever y your issues are, and definitely building your tribe around that. You know, and, and sometimes as well, you know, I mean, Jack will sort of understand this. When you come out of um, some sort of situation where somebody else hasn't seen your self-worth and that makes yours lower, actually what that's doing is it's closed a door, it's removed energy from your life that wasn't good for you, that wasn't working for you. And it gives you this lovely space for you to fill your life with things that are working for you and that's things it. that are better. So it's not a case of, oh, that's being awful. I'm going to grieve over it or I'm going to be angry over it. Sometimes we have to be thankful that it's happened because what it's done is it's removed us from a situation that wasn't working or yeah. that wasn't making us feel great about ourselves. And it gives us the opportunity to then accept something nicer, better, more productive, more healthy to come in. So in a way, it's it's something to be thankful for. Oh, definitely. Yeah. I mean, I think you've got to be able to learn to ha take you just have you time because lots yeah. of people, there's, there's an awful lot of people around that I found that they don't like being by themselves. They can't cope with just being by themselves. I can always find something to do. I, yeah. It doesn't bother me if I haven't got people around me all the time. But I think you need to ha you need to learn to do that. Yes. And I think it and that I think that is healthy. You do need to have you time because then you can just indulge in yourself for a bit and you're not giving all out all your power and energy out to other people because that isn't again healthy for yourself. And I think if you have your 
take a few hours a day or a week or anything and ha just look at yourself and enjoy yourself your own com company because that really is important yeah <laughs> jack's just put on this well, me that i have fully intended staying in my own less drama <laughs> Do you know what, Jack? That's why I'm a head witch. Honestly, I love working from home. I love my own space. I enjoy having people around me, but they're hand-picked people. They've, and I think this is what I was sort of saying about being in my 40s. You know, you get to that point where you just think, oh, do you know what? I don't need the drama. I don't need all that stress. Actually, I'm quite happy just, you know, living in my own little life or, or whatever. But he's also put there, you know, he's, he's working on not having an ego response. And that is some of it. We view ego as being, oh, that person's egotistical or whatever. Yeah. But ego is actually the part of your psyche that is meeting your needs, isn't it? And yes. sometimes it's very important to know what is your need and what is a want or what is a desire. And actually meeting those needs. So keeping your ego balanced, if you see it on like the, you know, there's ego aid and there's another one that I can never remember. I don't know if you can remember what that is. And your ego sits in the middle and you've basically got the, the different sides of your psyche um, that you, you have to sort of meet everybody's needs. But it's not about meeting other people's. It's everybody's is in those things within yourself. Makes it sound like we're all schizophrenic and there's three or four people in one. But <laughs> that, that, that's not what I mean. There's all these different no. levels, isn't there, of, of your psyche mentally yes. emotionally physically spiritually i mean you've got seven levels to your aura and you know what you were saying before about it making you physically ill 75 percent of all illness including cancers and things come from stress or an imbalance in energy yeah and we don't recognize that so you know my argument as a therapist is everybody will go out and spend a fortune on having nice clothes or an expensive car or an expensive house or having their nails done because it makes them feel good if they're shown to the world that they're okay but they don't always want to work on the internal stuff and no. actually you know going for a massage or as we both do we go for counseling when we don't need it because we go i'm just yes. gonna check in i'm it's just i'm okay. just coming away with everybody else i'm just making sure i'm okay you know sometimes you do need to spend that bit of time and it's okay to say to somebody my diary is full and actually have several blocks in that diary that aren't full but what you're doing is you're making that time for you yeah. and giving yourself that time and and like you said before it's about that power it's about empowering yourself taking your power back nobody can hurt you if you don't give them the power to hurt them no. so by taking that power back you're empowering yourself which builds yeah. your self-worth doesn't it that's it it is and you've got your self-worth is so important because you won't enjoy your life if you don't have that self-worth at all yeah. because yeah. and it, and it, just take the time out um and think about things and don't you don't have to follow the crowd yeah. you're an individual and i think you've just got to believe in yourself and i think that is the biggest thing it doesn't yeah. matter what anybody else says as long as you believe in you that is the main thing. Absolutely, a hundred percent. And this is where people who are very successful, they don't not believe in themselves. You know, I have never met a success a successful business person who's gone. Mm, I get up in the morning, yeah, not sure. a bit low. They get up yeah. and they go. I'm not accepting that the day is not going to go the way I wanted to. This is the goal I've got by the end of the day, yeah. and I'm going to reach that goal. And they don't even take in any other perspective do they you know it's no. just well well i got up here and i'm going to be there by the end of the day and whatever i need to do to get there that's what's going to happen because it's going to happen yeah and i think you know sometimes we need to all be a little bit more like that don't we you do yeah you definitely definitely do and as and the thing is if you do need somebody to help you get there ask yeah don't absolutely. you know don't be ashamed of asking for the assistance and everything yeah. but don't let everybody else tell you you're not you can't do it you won't do it you're not capable of doing it because you are and that's yeah. the thing is to believe that you really if you're gonna if you really believe that you can do something you will do it yeah. uh, I yeah. know that from the last year I mean and you know that from your book because yeah. you did, I mean when we first started talking you I mean you spoke about having a book and wanting to write a book and you'd got half of it done sort of thing Written and everything about five. <laughs> Yeah, but you I no, I don't know if I can get it. Said, yes, you can. Yeah, and yeah, that's absolutely. it. And it, it came out, and it's just believing in yourself that you can do something. Yeah, and you will, you will definitely, definitely do it. 
And actually, when I published that book, you know, I thought if I sell one copy, then I'm quite happy with that because one person's bought it. I did think that that might be family, but actually, there were, I don't think it was one member of my family actually bought my book. But <laughs> I remember my dad saying, are you going to give us one for Christmas? No, you tight chop. Go on, go on, go on. Get on Amazon and buy it. But, you know, um, I didn't take offence at that anymore. It didn't mean they weren't supporting me. It just meant no. what I mean. You know, my dad's never read a book in his life since he left school, I don't think. You know, it doesn't mean he doesn't support me. He's really proud of me. But yeah. I did that for me. And as you know, obviously, you've sort of taught me through a lot of the process because I, it was going to end up spending thousands going through these different publishing companies. That's right. Doing. And actually... What what made it for me was wasn't the book sales. It was starting to get messages from people going, "Oh my God, I've read your book, and do you know what? I, that really resonates with me. Yeah. That really makes sense with me. I understand it from a human point of view. And you know, you've broken everything down. Now I had some people who did what I did with yours, who picked it up and read it cover at the cover and didn't put it down in between. Yeah. I had other people who took weeks or months over over reading and worked through it bit by bit which was kind of how it was written to do yes and yeah you know I mean my only problem now with my other books is getting the time but I do need to get my bum into gear but this is it isn't it if you have a goal do it you don't have to have like a, a fantastic success rate at the end of it it's more no. about achieving your own goals that's it it's what you get out of it and I, I did exactly say I needed to do that and as you said, I didn't expect to sell, sell thousands or anything like that. As long, all I was bothered about, as long as one person, it helped. Yeah. And that was it. And that the feedback and everything was absolutely fantastic. And I know I've helped people. And yeah. that that gave me a huge I reached buzz. best author. Yeah. <laughs> I will just point out, you reached best author. <laughs> yeah. But it gave me a buzz um, from doing yeah. that. But I mean, and I achieved and made myself happy. And that's so, so important these days because the world isn't around making each individual person happy. You have to make yourself happy. Yeah. And that's exactly it, isn't it? You know, happiness does... When, when people say, oh, such and such did that and made me feel like, you're making me angry. You know, yeah. and people who are controlling do that. Don't they? You're making yeah. me angry. You're making me treat you like this. No, that's a lack of self-control on your side. I'm not making you do anything. I'm not making somebody feel a way somebody might feel some way because of what I've said or what I've done but then you come into the words of I'm responsible for what I say and not for what you understand isn't it and I think when your self-worth's low you will often choose to understand that that person's putting you down without realizing that when actually that person's intention hasn't been that at all yes so just sort of like because we'll, we'll finish up in about 10 minutes but I wrote down a couple of things here for anybody who didn't realise that their self-worth was quite low, to maybe look at some of the behaviours that they're doing in their lives that might make them go, oh, actually, I didn't even realise that that was connected. Yeah. Um, so just before I do, um, Jack said, loved your book and could relate a lot to it, and it does link in with self-worth. So, yeah, it does. Very good. Absolutely. Yeah, it does. Yeah, um, we, we were saying that if, you're, if you are in, a, especially if you're in a relationship and the person is saying, you've made me do this, you've made me feel like that, no, it's them that's making you. You have got to stand up for yourself and yeah. think, do I need this? Am I, I'm worth more. And that's yeah. the thing, you are worth more. And, and do you and know what? I always laugh when, um, I don't know if they call her Cheryl Tweedy or whatever her name goes back to now. I think she's been married. Yeah, oh, yeah. Time, she, you know, <laughs> but... Um, you know, obviously, northeastern accent like me, and then yeah. she did that um, advert, you know, because we're worth it. And it yeah. always makes me laugh when you say that in a Geordie accent. <laughs> but you know what? You are, whether that's yeah. buying yourself a face cream, whether that's giving yourself a little, you know, a hot bath and a, a, a manicure or pedicure, whether that's taking yourself out for a walk, whether that's giving yourself time to read a book, whether that's walking away from a situation that doesn't suit you, whether it's leaving a job because that whole environment is toxic around you, it is realising, as you've just said, you are worth more. Yeah. 100%. You are Don't worth ever, more. ever forget that. That's it. And yes, it might be a struggle and a shock to begin with, but it will. you will sort it out because yeah. you'll have your own time, you'll be able to see what you're thinking about, and you're not going to have the negativity being thrown at yeah. you all the time. And that's because because that's all that's bringing you down is that uh, that negativity that's being fired at you. You take yeah. that situation away and you learn to live how you want to live 
or how you want to work and it will always always work out because yeah. you will get the answers yeah. because you're you will feel so much happier and if you're happy you can do anything yeah oh 100 percent. and it all comes back to the law of attraction with that isn't it you know yeah when you're happy the magic happens you know if you're desperately trying to lose weight you get up every morning you tell yourself you're fat every day your subconscious goes she's fat or he's fat and then it doesn't feel the need to drop that weight if you just go about your life being happy reduce your calories a bit do a bit of exercise don't over focus on it then that will naturally come off and it, it's the same with you know if you if you're doing a job or you're in a relationship if you are happy and your needs are being met then it's a much more successful outcome isn't it you know Definitely. yes so you know it's always something to look at so some of the things i've written down are um i've put low sense of self-worth being your own worst enemy which is what we were talking about before you can be your own best friend which is what we need to be yeah you can be your worst enemy you would not surround yourself with people who made you feel low all the time out of choice would you so you no. know don't do that to yourself basically codependency in relationships if you've got low self-worth you will always feel you can't survive without that person mm -hmm. won't you yes definitely and you can yeah, yeah. And then I've got fear of being abandoned or neglected, which is what we spoke about before. Sometimes yeah. your self-worth is low because if you feel you're not putting other people before you, they will reject you in some way. And actually, do you know what? That's all right. It, it's all right it's, to do. Reject you, isn't it? If, yeah. if, if you're not happy. Okay, fair enough. Thanks very much. Yeah. I'm free now. You know, like, yeah. Yeah, I'm going to do what makes me happy now. <laughs> Yeah, and people don't view it like that, do they? The view being sort of like abandoned or pushed away is, oh, when well, after yeah. this, be going, yay, yay. Thank yourself for that one. Um, putting others before yourself, which is kind of what we've discussed a lot, craving validation. And one of the yes. things is, is self-shame or guilt, which goes along with that craving validation, doesn't it? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Go on. It's, I was just say, it's been, a, it's a heavy thing to talk, you know, talking about self-worth and believing in it and it's just something that everybody needs to look at yeah and yeah. act on as well because yeah. if you keep doing the same thing as you keep doing you'll get the same back and Absolutely. so you've got to just just jump in and start from today think no i'm going to get my self-worth back and you'll be amazed at how different you'll be feeling yeah and it's about not accepting behavior that isn't acceptable, isn't it? You know, one of the Definitely. things I've put down here is resistant change, because as we all know, unless change is forced on us, we very often resist that change. And it takes a lot of courage and a lot of strength to go for it. But also we tolerate a lot of bad behaviors from other people. Yeah. Um, and, and actually, we don't really need to do that. And sometimes yeah. those people, they might not be wicked, evil people. It may be that their self-worth is really low. And, yeah, and they might not realise what they're saying. Sometimes mm -hmm. they don't even think they've done it. And I think if somebody says something to you you don't like, tell them. Yeah, Be open absolutely. and honest. Just say, I don't like what you've just said. I don't like the way you've just said something to me. Because, as you say, they might not realise that they're even doing it. That's just the way they yeah. are and everything. Yeah. And it will shock them and think, oh, and they probably won't do it any longer. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's really important to sort of stand up and say to somebody, actually, I don't need to listen to that or you don't need to speak yeah. to me like that because that's not acceptable. And they might then go and look at why are they like that? What do they accept from other people? Why do they feel that that behavior is right when actually it could be that it's come down a long line of kind of their um, conditioning in life, if that makes sense, you yeah. know, which doesn't always make it right. But, you know, a lot of people have problems setting those boundaries, don't they? Yeah, they do. Um, and, you know, I mean, I learned over the last couple of years that actually I have to make very clear boundaries because if you always move your boundaries, people don't respect them because no. they'll know you'll always move them. But if you have your boundaries and you'll go, I'll meet you here, meet you halfway from, sorry, that's where the line's drawn. Yeah. They will either leave your life or they will meet you where you want them to meet you. That's it. And it can be scary as well when you set your boundaries out. If you've never, if you've never ever had boundaries before... And then all of a sudden you decide, no, I'm going to set these and this is how I'm going forward. It is a scary thing to do, yeah. but you will feel so much better once you've done it. Definitely. And again, coming into writing those things down to remind yeah. yourself, you know, oh, yes, yes that's a boundary. Because yeah. sometimes we'll set a boundary and then we forget about it, don't we? We go, well, I did that on Tuesday. I don't really need to keep it going. You're like, no, no, 
you need to do it every day. That's yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. But you know, Jack's right. Upbringing, learned mm-hmm. behaviours. You know, um, I mean, it's it's like when you see naughty children at school. You know, my my husband's a teacher, and he'll he'll see children with particular behaviour patterns, and then he'll meet the parents, and it doesn't always follow. But sometimes you'll meet the parents and go, I now understand why the child behaves the way it yeah. does. Yeah. And it, like I say, it's not always that way. Sometimes, you know, the parents are very different, but sometimes it does come down that pattern. And it's it breaking that behaviour, isn't it? Yeah. And that's yeah. the same with relationships. If you've come yeah. from, if your parents had a particular relationship, relationship and you you may go into the same type of relationship. And yeah. then all of a sudden you'll realise it's not the one I want. Yeah. And so that you'll you can you know step back and think no I need to now I don't need to look at what my parents did I want to live like this and then you yes. put you so you set your boundaries out and from now on this is how I'm yeah. going to live and be just be brave and do it because you can do yeah. it you don't have to keep following on the generations and how things happened before yeah. it's your it's now your life to go forward and you yeah. can set the you know the next boundaries and what how you expect people to treat you yeah and we do have more choices these days don't we. We have a lot more choices. You know, women oh. don't have to stay in abusive relationships because they can't afford to look after themselves. You know, years ago, women's wages were way lower than men's. And, you know, you were expected that if your man left, then you had to live on a very small wage and, and yeah. look after your children. And it, it was impossible. So sometimes, particularly women, were sort of trapped in relationships because of financial circumstances similarly yep. with men I think that comes down to the self-worth thing of sometimes they can be trapped in an abusive relationship because they don't want to be appear as being weak or yes or that they've not been able to stand up to somebody and it's the shame and the guilt and yeah and now we do have more support we do have more choices you know and I think both sexes should 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 be a lot more able to make those choices for a healthier way forward for themselves but we've still got a long way to go with oh, that totally. yeah. And, yeah and I think the main thing is to talk to somebody find somebody that you can talk to because if you can you don't need they probably can't give you the answers again but if you get it all out to them mm-hmm. it you you will find your own answers but it's just easier to get it spilled out of your head or and get it or black and put it into black and white because when you see something in black and white you'll think oh and you'll think it'll all start triggering oh, I can do this and I can change that yeah um, that makes a huge difference Just yeah definitely out. I think you know where you write things down I talk to myself I'm often seen in the car but no way I mean thank <laughs> god now people have like hands-free speaker phones because you know people just think that I'm on the phone but I, I speak my thoughts out loud because of how, yeah. you know, and when you mentioned meditation before, a lot of people, and I go through this with my clients every day, people think that you have to sit for half an hour, blank your mind, yeah. have no thoughts. That's not what meditation is. No, not it's at all. giving yourself time and space to allow your brain to file everything away and go through it. That's and it. You do that with writing. We both do it with walking. I do yeah. that with talking to myself. Even when I'm out in the fields, I'm ch- no way. I walk past somebody and they're like, oh, no, they just don't want to. <laughs> um, but it, it is, it's about, you know, talking to other people, talking to yourself, putting it in perspective, because when it's down on paper or it's out in the air, it sounds very different to when it's in your head. Yes. It? It, and I think it becomes bearable and achievable once it's out. Yeah. 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 So. Definitely. Definitely. Yes. So I think we've just about covered. I mean, you could, we could obviously, you and I could talk about it for hours and oh, hours. Oh, well, for we everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. I think, you know, from, from both of us as well, you know, if, if anybody is struggling out there, they're struggling to sort of, um, with any of their self-worth issues, then, you know, please feel free to get in touch with either Maxine or myself. Um, thank you, Jack, for, for joining in on the comments. I know there's been a few people watching who haven't joined in for comments, but it's lovely that somebody's had the confidence to do that. And I'm sure that that will build. I know when I do my lives, my readings and things, you know, you start off, nobody wants to talk and then gradually people get used to it. But it's been lovely to have that input, Jack. It really has. Um, yeah. You know, and, and as well, we're sort of quite happy as we're doing these chats to sometimes invite somebody else into them, aren't we? You know, who, who yeah. can talk about their experiences and that because we want as we said last week we want these not to just be professional we want them to be like humanistic we want them yes. to be just like in layman's terms from one person to another look we're all struggling 
we all have problems. We work in this field and we've still struggled for years. That's it. We? So, yeah, we just yeah. it's just a normal chat. And if we can help anybody, that's and that's why we're doing it for. And as you say, yeah, anybody wants to join us or if they've got a conversation they think would be really relevant and useful, just to send us a message and we can look at doing those. Yeah, you know, what anybody will whatever will help anybody, and that's the main yeah. reason why we're doing it. Yeah, open ideas all the time, aren't we? Yeah, we are talking to important things as well because we want this to be for people, don't we? It's not about us. It's, no, it's, it's just yeah. it's just yeah. to open people's way of different change to the way people think and things like that to help. So, uh, yeah. but obviously this will go so you can it'll go onto the podcast and it'll also go onto your YouTube, and my YouTube, so that people can watch it back if you haven't had time to watch it today. Yeah, yeah. Jack's just asking for a Reiki session there, so I'll give him a quick yeah, message afterwards. It. One of my favourite things, particularly for self worth and healing. I absolutely love healing, so yeah, we were definitely. To that. But yeah, it's it's been lovely as always to catch up with you, Maxine. It really it has. has and, Likewise, you know, we'll yeah. be having a chat again soon. Gosh, yeah. When you get sorted, <laughs> bless you. <laughs> All right, well, you take care. Thank you, everybody, for listening. And for those of you who've been watching as well, please do feel free to share this round on your Facebooks or, or your channels, whatever way that you do that, you know, so we can reach as many people as possible. Please do reach out to us, even if it's just a, a comment that you've got on something that we've discussed today or something you would like us to discuss in the future. We are always here. Always. Definitely, and we'll reply back to you as quickly as we can for you. Thanks ever so much for watching. Bye. All right, take care. Bye.